Welcome to the first lesson of Excel formulas and data operations course. Uh, we start with basic math formulas and uh, this is going to be a short repetition for all of the Excel users. If you are not interested, of course, you can skip the lesson and move on. Before we dive into Excel formulas, I would like to show you what happens when you select in Excel some cells. You can select few cells with Ctrl and left mouse click button, or you can select the whole column. On the bottom status bar of Excel, you can see the basic formulas uh, that we will rewrite in a second in Excel. You can find there nothing. Uh, if this is the case, you should turn on the average count, the numerical count, minimum, maximum and the sum. Since this is something that might be useful for a quick calculation and now this is something we will write in a second in Excel. The first exercise we need to sum two cells G2 and G3. Uh, every Excel formula starts with equation sign and then you can just select the first cell, use some kind of math operator like plus sign and select another cell like G3. After hitting enter, we will get the end result. What kind of operators can you use uh, within Excel formulas? You can add things, you can subtract things, you can multiply things, you can divide things, you can use brackets uh, to enforce proper order of math operations, and we will discover also uh, other operators that can be used like the equation sign, like is greater than and uh, is less than. These are all operators that can be used within Excel formulas. Usually we, in Excel, you can perform an operation on, in different ways. Uh, and uh, if we would like to sum G2 and G3 um, cells, we can use a ready to use formula from Excel, which is called the sum. And there you can select the first number, use semicolon as in my case, and select the other uh, cell and close the bracket at the end. Uh, if you are using the English settings for your computer, probably instead of semicolon, you will use comma in your case. Local settings of your co computer may also influence other parts of Excel, like uh, how the date looks like, how the decimal numbers will look like, but we will talk about this yeah, later. The other way to do it is to once again write the sum formula, but this time to select a range of cells that will be reflected in Excel by column. And in new Excel, you don't need to remember about um, closing the bracket. And when you hit enter, Excel will guess that the bracket should be closed. In case of the third formula, Excel indicates a possible error, but at the moment we will ignore that since the formula is correct and we will come back to all of the errors and formulas problems in a different lesson. So now if we would like to sum all the values in the G column, we can use once again the sum formula, select the first cell in the range G2 and select down to the bottom of the table. You can do it by mouse, but you can use also the combination of Ctrl, Shift and down arrow. And then when we close the bracket and hit enter, we will get the result. There is an alternative that in some scenarios might be very useful because when you enter new data, you would have to correct the formula in J2 cell. Uh, so to make the formula work even more broadly, you can write the same formula, but using the whole G column. And then when you enter new data in the G column, you will always get the actual result at the end. Usually when you refer to cells, uh, you start with columns and then you give rows. In this case, we don't give any rows uh, since we operate on the whole column. That is why we insert the formula argument as G until G column. 
What if we would like to sum both the G and F columns? Again, we can do it in many different ways. The first one would be let's sum the G column and then create a new sum. You can write it, you can select it, you can copy it from the formula bar and replace also uh, the column letters. And when you hit enter, you get the end result. The second option is to work on the whole column, which means sum the whole G column plus sum the whole F column. And the last option, we can sum the range from F until G columns. This is the fastest one. And when you hit enter, you will get exactly the same result. Now we can go through other formulas like the average count, count A and max. Let's start with the average and we will calculate the average on the G column. Uh, this average excludes uh, empty cells and excludes also the heading and uh, calculates the average value in this column. The next one is count, which means count how many numbers we have in here. And we have in here 200 rows uh, plus the heading, but 200 rows with numbers. If you would like to include the text, you can count A which means include the text and all the cells that are not empty. And the last one is max, which is very similar to mean. This time the maximum from the F column, we get the highest value. We have still one cell missing in here to show you how the average works. When you calculate the average, you actually sum the data and divide it by the number of rows. So both of the numbers should look exactly the same. We can try to format them to check whether they are equal also on all of decimal places. And we see that the average is correct. When we talk about basic math formulas, we can include also data formatting, which may happen on the home tab, but might be found also under right click under the format cells option. You can find a lot of formatting in here, but we'll concentrate on formatting numbers this time, where you can use a separator in Poland. This is space, but you can find also a comma in the English local and we have this decimal place as a comma, but in English local this might be a dot. We have also the number of decimal places that we can decrease and after hitting OK, we will get the data formatted.